Hello everybody, Clip here with another video. It's been a while. Um, this one is going to be a little bit different from what I generally do. Simply because people in Skyforge um, need to see and need to be informed about how to build a character without destroying said character. Uh, myself and a lot of people have fallen into this hole and trying to explain this when you're not looking at the same thing is frankly very difficult. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna explain a couple things. At the bottom left corner of your screen you got your prestige. That's supposed to be a direct calculation of your power. Every time you purchase a node on the atlas you see it increases your prestige by said node. Now for myself I run a lot of DPS. I run frankly a uh, crit based DPS. While running that, this node right here, the only reason why I'm grabbing this and this and this node is because it leads towards night, and I have to unlock night. Before you get god form, your main focus should be unlocking every class. Now, first, you have to figure out what class do you want to play the most. Um, when I first started, the class I wanted to play was Warlock. This as the most expensive class to get to because all these nodes are in the 800 to 600 range you also have to be aware aware of the pitfalls of these pink and gray nodes don't know where a gray node is currently they are currently unlockable only when you get god form and have unlocked hostile territories, which takes 24 hours after you've obtained god form and accepted the quest to unlock. Uh, I fell into this trap and ended up going for Slayer. Now, once you've unlocked a class, your job, or rather your focus should be... Let me find the start of this damn class. Unlocking glass sparks. The next focus that you should do is hitting every single node, every single center node, every ability, every talent. Once you've done that, you get a unique costume, and you unlock symbol slots. So if you come over here to this page, as you can see, I have 17 out of 17 currently. If you want a current update on what nodes, uh, what classes I've maxed out, you can see down here, Cryomancer, Paladin, Archer, Slayer, Kinetic, Warlock, and Gunner. When you unlock their class node, or rather, when you complete the class entirely, you unlock their symbol. Their symbols are very important. Now, symbols in a whole are extremely important. When you're, once you've gotten to the class node that allows you to have sparks, you are then not building with red, blue, green, otherwise known as destruction, balance, and creation. Uh, those sparks are then should be used for specifically going... Shut up, robot. Specifically used to unlock your... Um, sorry, that robot really threw me off. Your symbols. So as you can see here... You have a whole bunch of information on my symbols currently. I have the main the main symbols that you want to run uh, when you're running for DPS are going to be maximum recoil and ultimate strength. Now these have six, I believe, either six or five tiers, and they increase by 10% every tier on that um, on that specific node. If you come down here, element of surprise, due to the build that I am using as a warlock, this is a very important node for me. Because within the first 7 seconds of the fight, my shield breaks. Or otherwise known as volatile curse. And it does a mass amount of damage. During those first 8 seconds, that shield breaks, it is still increased by 12% of every level of this symbol. I currently have 3, so I'm doing 36% more damage because of this symbol. And as you see you got to kind of just go in here and look at what symbols are going to be important for you. For a tank, your symbols are going to be down this way. Um, you're going to be wanting... Let me find them. 
you want to get this main threat you want to get let's see here I think that might be a god talent I am unsure um, you basically want to get symbols that reduce the damage that you're gonna take and symbols that increase the threat that you are you know and by threat I mean the attention of the other enemies as this um, symbol says um, as a support, you're going to be wanting something similar to this, Guardian Humanity, which, no, sorry, my bad, that's, um, that's tank. You want Strength of Faith. The efficiency of your support aura increases. As a Lightbinder and as an Alchemist, you have an aura that increases the stats of those near you. Uh, you also want to be focused as a support on Spirit and Valor. Now, another very important thing for all classes is running strength. Mind you, if you are specified as an alchemist, you're going to be running different. Uh, say your main goal is to increase the power of a DPS. Your syringes give your ability, uh, all your you know ability points, all your stats, on top of that other person's stats. So say you're trying to make somebody hit harder in a crit and hit harder generally, you want to be running strength crit instead of everything else. Now, Going away from classes and what sparks they should be doing, I might make another video specifically focused on that once I look more in depth in here. We want to go back into the main question. How do you build your character without breaking it? I briefly stated that you should focus on a class, build it out full, and keep playing that class. Once you've found that class that you like, that is easily attainable, be it Cryo, Lightbinder, um, kinetic, which is up here, Slayer, you know, one of these readily accessible classes where you don't have to go, like I did, all the way over to here. Once you've maxed them out, you start accumulating these little gold sparks up here, sparks of evolution, instead of those class sparks. And when I say maxed out, for that specific class, you want to fill every node. Now, you don't want to do this for every class, because it raises your prestige, but it doesn't always raise your stats. Now, getting more into that, due to the new patch, back when I played, we didn't have these atlases. If you come down here into Mechanoids, once you've unlocked Godform and unlocked Hostile Territories, you now are accumulating something called Edioses and able to do certain types of invasions that you aren't able to do before. When you get these Edioses, I'm not even sure if I'm really pr properly pronouncing this correctly, you can research them, and once you research them, you unlock these special uh, sparks, let's call them, called Knowledge Of. This is Knowledge of Mechanoids. Now, for DPS, you really, really, really want to start researching Mechanoids first, because it is the cheapest, cheapest giant stat increase that you're going to receive. So, immediately, you're going to come down here and build, without grabbing all these points. Now see, for me, this one, bonus strength, I went ahead and go ahead and grab that. Even though it is outside of my path to luck, it is still a valuable node for me. And as you can see, I am currently building towards luck. They get more expensive as you go. And for somebody playing support who's focusing Valor Spirit, it's going to start costing a thousand. And they are hard to farm. That's why I said, for DPS, you really want to focus on this one because you have Strength right here costing only 500. You have Luck right here only costing 500. Now if you come over here into Gorgonoids, as you can see I have made a fatal mistake filling that Atlas out. Do not do what I've done. Once you start researching these guys, this is another DPS, this is DPS, and this is support focused in a way. It's only kind of half and half. Because to get to Strength, you need a 1,000. To get to Valor, you need a 1,000. However, you can get to Spirit for relatively cheap, and Luck for relatively cheap when it comes to knowledge farming. And basically, you just want to kind of look into where are they? What are they? What's closest? Because this, when you're going through this tree, it's still raising your prestige. It's still raising your prestige, but instead of raising your prestige a lot for a little, it's giving you, if you just look at this, that is all but six. Six of those is luck. I mean, uh, six of those are stamina. The rest of that is luck, and right in the middle, that's 240 luck going on top of what your rings give you. 
that is a very valuable node for DPS. Now, don't make the flaw that I did here. As you can see, I've already started using my Gorgonide Sparks. Gorgonides take a very long time to get to the Avatar. The only reason you really want to build into Gorgonides is to grab protection from them, to grab more damage against them, and to grab talents focused on what they offer. I mean, you have some weird talents coming in here that you see in your symbols page. Uh, they are symbols. And you also see some of these symbols in your invasion symbols. You don't. You, when you accumulate these sparks, you want to save them. You don't want to spend them right away because, it, like I said, you have might, you have valor, you have stamina. Might is bad for you. A lot of people do not know this, and I'm going to go over that after I've brushed up over this topic. Getting to this node, I had to grab a whole bunch of things that aren't necessarily good for me. The entire way to this node right here, I only got one luck. My two stats that I only really want to build are going to be strength and luck. Now, to explain what I just previously said, might is bad. We're going to come over here to my stats. I am currently running because I'm not in a party. I have 13k might. Almost 14k, so we'll say 14k. The sweet spot that you want your stats to be in is, say you have 14k might, you want to have 7k strength, because the ratio of damage that might gives versus strength is a 3 to 1. It takes 3 might to get 1 damage, according to 1 strength, to get 1 damage. That's not saying that 1 damage gives you 1 power, 1 damage. It's saying that it takes 3 to get the same effect of 1 strength. And so maybe you have a lot of might. If you have a lot of might, you have a lot of prestige but you're not doing damage according to your prestige. You always want to get below what that ratio is. You want to have it a 2 to 1, because it is inevitable. You're going to have to farm might. You're going to have to have it, because they are everywhere. They are the most frequent nodes. I think they're the only red nodes. But you're, you're going to have to end up gap grabbing them to get to your symbol, to get to your class. But, you always want to get more strength whenever you can. So going back to the Atlas one more time, I am going to show you some things that I have done that I regret, things that I have done that I am happy that I did. Now as you see here, this entire node, except for those two, are filled out. If you look over here, these entire nodes are almost filled out. In fact, that one is. This is something you do not want to do. This is very bad for you. You're gaining more prestige, but you're not gaining more power. However, when it is acceptable, is here. Sorry, not here. Here. So say I was building towards this symbol, and I see two luck with only one stamina between me and that luck. I'm going to grab that luck. However, where it is not acceptable is seeing three nodes before two strength. However, these nodes don't really increase your prestige by all that much, so it should be okay to grab, but you always have to keep that in mind. What am I gaining for my sparks? What am I gaining for my prestige? Once you've finished asking yourself that, you have pretty much gotten an idea how to build your character. Too much might, you're too weak. Too much prestige, not enough strength, you're too weak. Too much prestige, not enough valor and spirit, you're a weak support. You always gotta ask yourself those questions before you purchase a node, is this worth it? That being said, continue playing. I love to see people playing this game. I love to see the activity. Just don't go into the same mistake that me and a lot of other people have fallen into, where we're trying to fix our mistakes, and it's really hard to do. Y'all have a good one, guys.